Thank you so much. I really want to stay engaged against gun violence. It's so important that we add our voices to the countless number of people who are not only killed by gun violence, but it's often underrepresented the number of people who are injured and maimed and paralyzed in the trauma of gun violence and how important it is that we turn back this terrible disease that has really taken over our country. And I have one message to those who are gun manufacturers and advocates. We are not going away. We are never going to stop pursuing and pushing to make sure that our families can have a safe environment. The numbers speak for themselves. But we cannot classify the mass shootings merely by the location or the ethnicity or the mission of the shooter. Just as El Paso was a mass shooting, so the hell was Brownsville a mass shooting. 11 people shot in Brownsville. We cannot beautify the language to make it appear as though we have normalized violence in the communities of color all over this country. You don't have gun manufacturers that are opening factories in Brownsville or South, South Jamaica or South Side of Chicago or Liberty City in Miami or other parts of this country where various ethnic groups live. Yet you have an overproliferation of guns in those communities. Where the hell are they coming from? How come they're able to come so easy into our communities? 11 people shot in, in Brownsville, one killed. The person who lost his life in Brownsville, Brownsville, his mother just lost another child a few years earlier. This has become too normal when you think about it. But we don't have to leave the, the state. When I was in the state senate, we purchased an automatic weapon, and we walked down Broadway from Westchester County, and it was easy to come across the border into New York City. The gun problem is not only in Midwest and in Virginia, it's right here in New York State. We still sell high capacity ammunition. We still sell those guns that we talk about that are not used to kill deer, but to kill our dear loved ones and family members. This is a real conversation. We must be engaged. And when you look at these signs behind us, black, white, young, old, when the bullet leaves the barrel of a gun, it does not discriminate. And even when it hits the body, the trauma moves through the anatomy of the community. We never survive losing a loved one when they are killed in violence. We live, we live the trauma every day. America is suffering from PTSD because of the violence that we experience every day. Let me end with this. There's a term in law enforcement called sleeper cell. These are people who are quiet and they live out their sick mindset in the corner of their lives until something ignites them, something empowers them, something emboldens them, something gives them the belief that they can move forward. We have sleep themselves in this country. And the White House has to become the alarm clock that has both yes. been sleep yes. And they are carrying out their sick minds of attacking not only people in El Paso that speak a different language, but even our children in schools, our communities. We must send a strong message. We are not going away. And we're going to bring and take our country back. And so I want to thank Gays Against Gun Violence for opening your minds to this. Tomorrow we will be at Prospect Park. We're calling for a national mobilization of all good people. Come out and join us. Together we can make America understand the power of ending the sickness and madness of gun proliferation in our country. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Borough President.